If authentic Italian is important to you, this machine is about as authentically Italian as it gets. It's made in Milan by a company that's been doing it for more than a century. Beyond heritage, it has some desirable features typically reserved for machines at a higher price, like the accuracy of PID temperature control, available rosewood accents, joystick operated valves for steam and hot water. Hey, it's Brussels Lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. So I've had a lot of requests for a review of the Bedzera Magica PID, and I'm happy to say here it is. Coming up in this video, I'll take you for a tour inside the machine that's built around a beautiful two liter copper boiler. While we're in there, I'll show you how to adjust the brew pressure. I'll have results of milk steaming tests and show you the hands-free frothing trick you can do. We'll take a look at brew temperature consistency based on SCASE tests. I'll pull some shots along the way, show you a surprisingly simple thing that I love, show you what's in the box, cover matching accessories and maintenance products, and have some final thoughts. So a lot going on here. So I've got chapters marked in the video, so you'll be able to skip around to areas of interest. So let's talk about what sets Bedzera apart from other manufacturers. Of course, there's that history. It's fairly obvious, especially when you see the 1901 on the logo plate on the back of the Magica PID. But beyond that, Bedzera makes more of their own parts than any other manufacturer I'm aware of. A couple of years ago, I visited the facilities of most of the major machine manufacturers in Italy. Now, in most shops, companies are putting together parts made by a third-party supplier. Now, don't get me wrong, there's not a problem with that, but at Benzera, they've got the skills, craftsmen, and technology to make most of their own components. So they're making their own boilers, bending their own pipes, prototyping their own fittings, and making their own housings, drip trays, and more. So what does that get you? Well. I don't know, but maybe it's a more authentic machine if it's made mostly by a single entity that's been doing it for more than a century. One thing I do know, doing it this way cuts out a middleman or two and means you're getting top quality and features at a lower price. The Magica PID runs as much as $300 less than similar competing machines. The Bedzera Magica PID is a heat exchange boiler vibration pump machine with an E61 group. The large two liter boiler is copper. I like the one piece cup warming tray you can lift with the cups in place to access the massive four liter water reservoir, which is about 25% larger than competing machines. Less reservoir filling? Yeah, I'll take that. Brew temperature is set using the PID controller. To set, press the minus button, then use the plus and minus buttons to adjust to your desired brew temperature. A dot in the bottom right of the display indicates when the boiler's heating element is energized. Once up to temp, you'll see very short pulses of those dots. It's that short pulse combined with PID logic that gets you superior temperature consistency compared to machines without PID. Hot water and steam valves are operated by joystick levers and the wands for both are cool touch with internal insulation, which aside from preventing burns, reduces condensation in the steam wand for a drier steam. Low on the left are gauges for brew and steam pressure. Coming up, I'll take you inside the machine and show you how to adjust the brew pressure. Steam pressure depends on your brew temp setting, but it's about 1.2 bar when set to 200 Fahrenheit. The drip tray is large and slides off and on for emptying. The surprisingly simple thing I like here is the wire grate over the tray. A lot of machines use flat cut stainless. That style doesn't drain as well, so coffee and water pool, so they get dirty and need more cleaning. Beyond that, they're likely to scratch with time from cups with rough bottoms. The wire grate is gonna drain easily, so it looks cleaner and it's not gonna show scratches. All right, let me get the cover off the machine and we'll take a tour of the internals and I'll show you how to adjust the brew pressure. After that, we'll have results of frothing performance and brew temperature testing. All right, let's take a look inside the Bedzera Magica. Um, I'm also gonna show you, stick around, I'm gonna show you how to adjust the brew pressure on this machine. We'll talk a little bit more about there when we get there, but we're gonna take a look at everything inside. Um, so first, really easy to get inside. It's just eight screws with a three millimeter uh, Allen wrench here. Take the, you take your reservoir off first, but this is the top panel. This is the case, four screws on the bottom of this, four on top of that. 
all right here, very easy to do that. So we'll start with the water reservoir here. It's large, it's four liters. I love this, one of the larger water reservoirs I've run into. I'm gonna leave this on the machine so that we can uh, do our brew pressure adjustment in a minute. Notice right here, it's got a connector on each side. This is how it senses the level. Um, these go through in there, sends current through here. When it doesn't detect current or water, they uh, let you know it's out of water. So I'll get that set back in there. Okay, this is a vibration pump machine. There's the pump right there. So water's gonna come out of the reservoir into the pump this way, through this hose, over to right here. And if we're gonna brew, so we're gonna follow, first we'll just follow the water for brewing. So that water would go up through here. Um, this is where we're gonna set our brew pressure in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. Then water goes into here. This is a heat exchange boiler. I love this, a two liter uh, copper boiler. It looks absolutely beautiful, right? Uh, so the brew water would come in here. This section right in here, it's like a, maybe a paper towel roll size isolated section. So the water doesn't mix. Your water for steam is gonna be generated in here. Your water from brewing is always kept separate from that and gives off heat to the brew water. Okay, then from there. Now, when this is just sitting static, it's an E61 machine, so there is a constant flow of hot water out to the group. Even when you're not doing anything, the machine's just sitting here, water's flowing up this tube into the E61 group, heating up all that metal. Then it's gonna return back into that heat exchange section down through here and there. So it's always looping through. That's why these things get really hot and that's what helps with temperature stability. Now, if you're filling the steam, the section that generates your hot water or steam, this solenoid valve is gonna click here and then the water, it's kinda hard to see, goes into the boiler right here. So totally isolated from the brew water there. All right, so let's take a look at the connections on the boiler. Again, that's our heat exchange section. The heating element itself is right here. Uh, off Coming off the side, we do have, this is for our steam pressure gauge. So that's gonna follow down along there. I'll show you where the brew pressure is. In the oh, it's right here. Well, let's take a look at that now. So that goes over to the gauges, which are right out front over there. All right, then up top, did I miss anything here? Nope. Up top, we have the safety valve. So this will blow if the boiler ever got way too hot, so, uh, and it would release the pressure. Next door to that, this is our water level fill probe. So a little probe goes down in the boiler and senses when the water level is at the right spot. If there's not enough, the pump will kick on. That solenoid valve will open up and fill up the boiler. Right here, the vac vacuum relief valve. Um, so it's down in here a little bit. So what happens is when this machine gets up to boiling, it pushes up a little valve in here that closes off the boiler. Then when it cools back down, it's gonna open back up. I like that they have this little silicone tube around it. It lets out just a little bit of water when the uh, machine is first heating up, but that's gonna come right out the top of the machine. Next to that, we have the PID probe. Uh, so this is what uh, checks the temperature in here. This is a PID machine, um, so it's much more accurate in temperature control than a pressure stat machine, which would sense a range of pressure and tell a heating element to go on and off. So over here, that's gonna go to our Jakar controller right here for the PID. Um, that's the electrical connection there. Then down underneath here, we have more electrical components, kind of a junction box in here and then a relay over here that actually sends the power to the boiler. That's all under this metal shield, kept well away from any portions of the machine which contain water. And over on this side, something else to be aware of, this machine does have a high limit reset. So if this, this is like a little thermostat really, resettable, kind of like a circuit breaker. If the boiler ever gets too hot, this will pop. And then if your boiler doesn't heat, what you do is come in here. Very rare that that's gonna happen. Now something else I really like here, on this machine is a boiler drain. So you can see this little valve here, so you can take this cap off of here, and if you needed to drain the boiler, you can do that, like if you're gonna store the machine or something, makes it really easy. There's other ways to do it if you don't have this, but this just makes it really easy to get the boiler drained with that. All right, so let's go, we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn the machine on. Now do be careful if you do this, because now we, we're gonna have live power in here. I'm gonna turn the machine on, we may hear it fill here, Maybe not, uh, but we're gonna adjust the brew pressure using this. This is the OPV valve. So this tube right here ends up right here. So you can set how much pressure is gonna put in the system by adjusting this. Um, excess pressure in the form of water is then put right back into your water reservoir. So our machine's on. We've got our, the machine does come with a back flush disc. You'll need that to set the brew pressure. So we'll pop out the other one. I love this little port of filter, uh, filter basket levering tour tool, so we'll put that in. The machine doesn't have to be hot to set the brew pressure here, so we're gonna put this into the group. 
and I'm going to just turn the pump on. And we're going to see the pressure build up here. Here's our brew pressure. Coming up, coming up. Now, I already adjusted this. What, these are going to come from the factory usually set at 12 bar. I put mine at 10. You can have it wherever you want. Now, why Bezerra puts them at 12 is because the flow rate from a vibration pump is a little bit lower than, say, a rotary pump machine or their commercial machines. So I put mine at 10. You can put it wherever you like. But the way to do it, so I'm going to put my, it's a 16 millimeter wrench right here, put it on this. And as I turn this, this is going to adjust our brew pressure. So if you see, I turned it, uh, that was a little bit uh, counterclockwise there, and I'm bringing that pressure down. It's at nine. And if you see right now, we're going to have some water coming out of this return tube back into our reservoir. Um, you'll always have a little bit of that. But this is kind of like the maximum brew pressure setting. Now, I'm more of a guy that's about flow rather than brew pressure. Um, I think flow rate's very important. And that's why Bedzera set these at 12. So I'm gonna put this back to 12 for right now. Again, if you want it at 10 or if you want it at nine, you can you have it there. But that's how you set the brew pressure. Um, so I'm gonna shut that off. And that's our internal tour of the Bedzera Magica. I do love popping the hoods on these machines. That boiler is big and beautiful, and I like the extras like the boiler drain. With that out of the way, let's take a look at frothing performance, the hands-free trick and boiler recovery time after frothing. I test using our standard of five ounces of milk from the fridge into a room temperature pitcher and time how long it takes to froth milk to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. To go hands-free, it's going to take a little practice, but get the steam tip slightly below the surface of the milk and a little angle, and you can froth hands-free. The two-hole steam tip can take you right up to latte art quality, even hands-free. Total time to get to milk sweet point at 140 was a respectable 17 seconds. Following frothing, it was just 25 seconds for the boiler to fully recover to 1.2 bar of pressure. So back-to-back -back drinks are not a problem on this machine. To test brew temperature accuracy, I use a SCASE device, which simulates an extraction and has a very accurate internal thermometer. We bench test and set up the Magica PID before shipping to customers. As part of that process, we make custom adjustments to boiler offset values programmed in the PID to assure accurate brew temperatures. As you'll see, the extra setup makes a big difference, and most retailers are probably not going to do that for you. My testing is based on the WBC procedure as adapted to reflect home use. I ran four tests each, two to three minutes apart, with my PID set to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I'm picking up a few seconds into the test after things stabilize. Notice just how consistent the temperatures are, always within one degree Fahrenheit of 200. The combined average of the highest reading observed during the test was 200.25 degrees. That's just a quarter of a degree off the PID setting and, you know, really quite remarkable. Do know that if your machine has been sitting idle for extended periods, you'll likely need a flush and ambient temperatures along with other variables are going to affect things. But the bottom line here, brew temps are consistent and accurate, due in large part to the custom setup we do on the machine. The machine comes in standard black or you can go with a rosewood trim. In the box with both versions are single and double spout portafilters, single and double shot filter baskets, back flush disc, a group brush, coffee scoop, and the standard plastic tamper. But do do yourself a favor and get rid of that plastic tamper and get a real one like this matching rosewood tamper with the Bedzera logo etched in the handle. Other matching accessories include this tamping station, which holds your back flush disc and tamper, a sliding drawer knock box. On top of that, I have Bedzera's BB005 grinder. I call it the Bubba, with super precise stepless adjustment. It's an excellent value and a step into machine grade grinding. Also, check out Bedzera logo cups in espresso and two cappuccino sizes. They feature the Visconti Serpent, a snake devouring a person, which you'll find on buildings in and around Milan and also on the badge of Alfa Romeo Automobiles. To maintain your machine, be sure and pick up some kafitsa. It's what the pros use for back flushing and cleaning, portafilters, filter baskets, and other parts. 
and protect your machine from scale with BWT Best Safe pad filters. They drop in the reservoir when used as directed. They prevent scale formation using patented ion exchange technology, which replaces calcium in water with magnesium, giving you the minerals needed for flavor without the scale deposits. That's the Bedzera Magica PID, a truly authentic Italian machine with a lot to offer and an attractive price. If you have questions on this machine or anything coffee or espresso, use those comments and of course I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, be sure and subscribe and I'll see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.